Okay, this will be uh, the BC calculus sample questions five and six. And question number five, it's basically just an integral, and they want you to integrate x over x squared plus five x plus six. So this is just gonna be a good old partial fractions problem. Um, so remember, we have to do our partial fraction decomposition on um, this rational function. The denominator, x squared plus five x plus six, that just factors as x plus two times x plus three. Remember we break it up so that each factor gets its own fraction. And then on top we just have to put constants um, a and b and then again our goal is simply to solve for that. So I'm going to go through partial fractions a little faster. I assume if you're watching this video that uh, you've seen partial fractions before. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator x plus two, x plus three, well, if I do it to the left, I gotta do it to the right, x plus two, x plus three. On the left side, everything cancels out, I'm just left with x. On the right side, when I distribute, the x plus twos will cancel out, so I'll have a times x plus three. And then I'll have b, and then when I multiply out, the x plus threes will cancel, so I'll have b times x plus two. We could do equating coefficients and all that, but again, there's a little trick where what you try to do is pick clever values of x that will either make the a term disappear or the b term disappear. So notice if I let x equal <coughs> negative three, well, I have to plug it in everywhere in my equation. So if I plug in negative three, well, I'll get negative three on the left. Notice if I plug negative three into the first part, I'll get a times zero, so that just cancels out. And then we'll get b times negative three plus two, or negative one. Hey, that tells us then that b equals positive three, so we have one value. Likewise, um, I think the other value that would make sense to use would be x equals negative two. So then if we plug that in, we'll have negative two on the left. Again, on the right side, negative two plus three is one, so we'll have one a, the b terms cancel out. So now we know that a is simply equal to negative two. So I need to plug that back in. I know now a is negative two. I know that b has value positive three. And <clears throat> now, again, what I'm gonna do, instead of integrating this original thing, so it says instead of integrating x over x squared plus 5x plus 6 dx, instead what we can do is integrate negative 2 over x plus 2 plus 3 over x plus 3 quantity dx. Well, if we integrate this, we'll simply get negative 2, the natural logarithm of the absolute value x plus 2 plus three times the natural logarithm of x plus three plus c. So here we're gonna use our properties of logarithms as well. Um, I'm gonna, remember our coefficients can go upstairs as exponents. So whatever the coefficient is, we can put that up as a power. We can put that up as a power. So um, <clears throat> I'm actually gonna do a couple things first. Um, I'm gonna rewrite this as three times the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x plus three, and then I'm gonna write my minus two natural logarithm of x plus two, just to basically rearrange it and make it look like one of their solutions. So, so okay, so this is where I'm gonna do the trick where the um, coefficients go up as exponents. So I'll have the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x plus three quantity cubed. I'm going to leave the minus sign in the middle and make that the natural logarithm of x plus 2 quantity squared plus c. And remember lastly there's this property of logarithms that if um, if you're subtracting two logarithms you can simply turn that into division as long as they're the the same base which we have here because it's base e or the natural log. So on top we have x plus 3 quantity cubed in the denominator, we'll get our x plus two quantity squared. All that should be inside of absolute value plus c, and hey, there's our answer to that question. So, kind of a long, kind of a long little tedious question um, for sure. Let's see. Let's do one other one here. <clears throat> so, numero six is a lot better to me. 
it says simply find the derivative of x squared times sine squared x. Okay, so it's going to be a little tedious again. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just simply rewrite this. So we're finding the derivative of x squared. The other function, I can write sine squared of x as sine x quantity squared. So that's an equivalent way of writing it. And I like to see it this way just because it reminds me again to use the chain rule. Um, so here we're going to have to use both the product rule and the chain rule. So if we take the derivative, the derivative of the x squared part, if we do that, we'll just get, well, 2x. Let's leave the sine x quantity squared alone. Plus in the product rule, the derivative, or excuse me, we'll leave the x squared term alone. And now if I take the derivative of the sine x squared term, well, the 2 comes out front. We have to leave the inside alone. Take 1 away from the exponent, multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just going to be positive cosine. Um, it doesn't really look like there's too much else to do on this one. They simply rewrite this. So they rewrite it again as sine squared x. Um, and then it looks like, okay, maybe a couple of things here. So, um, so let's see, we have 2x squared sine x cosine x. So let's see, what we could do at this point is, so I'm not seeing that as one of their solutions here just yet. Um, so this is the fun part of the multiple choice part is, I mean, te definitely this is your, um, this is correct, but it's not looking like any of their A, B, or C. Um, it looks to me like the closest one that they do, and this is certainly going to be okay. So an, a little trig identity. Um, I'm going to pull the x squared out front, and then we have 2 sine x cosine x. I don't know what I just said, 2 sine x cosine x. Um, <clears throat> and remember, there's a trig identity for 2 sine x cosine x, and it says that that is simply sine of 2x. And this is, in fact, one of their answers. So they write it as 2x sine squared x plus x squared times sine of 2x. So, all right, a little tricky. Um, <clears throat> the derivative wasn't too bad, chain rule, product rule, but um, you definitely illustrating that you need to know your trig identities on these problems because otherwise, again, you can do everything correctly and it's just not going to look like one of their multiple choice answers. Moral of the story, know your trig identities, okay? All right, I hope these videos help. I'm definitely going to crank through some more um, sooner or later, so feel free to dig around and look for them. If they're not there yet, they will be, um, again, ho hopefully they'll be out there sooner than later, so feel free to post comments and questions. Um, I hope it helps, and good luck out there.